Hey everybody, so we're reading the Native American Legends and Myths. We are reading a story from the Yakima tribe. And the title says, Creation of the Yakima World. Okay. In the beginning of the world, all was water. We, me, me, oh wow. The great chief above lived up in the sky alone. When he decided to make the world, he went down to the shallow places in the water and began to throw up great handfuls of mud that became land. He piled some of the mud so high that it froze hard and made the mountains. <laughs> so the throwing of mud. Uh, so hand, okay. So the great chief above took pieces of mud and put it in piles and that's how the mountains were made in the in the t in the story even though they're from tectonic plates scientifically but it's still very creative when the rain came it turned into ice and snow on top of the high mountains some of the mud was hardened into rocks since that time the rocks have not changed they have only become harder the great chief above made trees grow on earth and also roots and berries. He made a man out of a ball of mud and told him to take fish from the waters and deer and other game from the forests. When the man became lonely, the great chief above made a woman to be his companion and taught her how to dress skins, so animal skins, how to find bark and roots and how to make baskets out of them. You see, a lot of people today will say insults like, Oh, your profession is basket weaving. Well, think about it. In the Native American culture, women were valued for being able to know how to make baskets. So, it's interesting how we use jobs of the past to degrade the jobs in the present, right? It tells you kind of like how rude that kind of really is. And, you know... Imagine if the world got an earthquake tomorrow. We'd probably have to start learning how to make baskets again anyway. So, you know. He taught her which berries to gather for food and how to pick them and dry them. He showed her how to cook the salmon and the game that the man brought. Look at that. So it's like the man has this specific duty, you know, to bring home the game. It's like he has his his duty given to him right the woman she's gonna make that food edible and taste good and like because both of them are contributing they're gonna have some fabulous salmon you know it seems very sweet like how those native american couples were and how they interacted with each other once when the woman was asleep she had a dream and in it she wondered what more she could do to please the man she prayed to the great chief above for help. He answered her prayer by blowing his breath on her and giving her something which she could not see or hear, smell or touch. This invisible something was preserved in a basket. Through it, the first woman taught her daughters and granddaughters the design and skills which had been taught her. So she got like a blessing or something by the great chief above. That's very cool. But in spite of all the things the great chief above did for them, the new people quarreled. They bickered so much that Mother Earth was angry. and her anger, she shook the mountains so hard that those hanging over the narrow part of Big River fell down. The rocks falling into the water dammed the stream and also made rapids and waterfalls. Many people and animals were killed and buried under the rocks and mountains. Some day the great chief above will overturn those mountains and rocks. Then the spirits that once lived in the bones buried there will go back into them. At present those spirits live in the tops of the mountains, watching their children on earth and waiting for the great change which is to come. The voices of these spirits can be heard in the mountains at all times. Mourners who wail for their dead hear spirit voices and reply, and thus they know that their lost ones are always near. 
Oh, <laughs> so sad. We did not know all this by ourselves. We were told it by our fathers and grandfathers, who taught it from their fathers and grandfathers. No one knows when the great chief above will overturn the mountains. But we do know this. The spirits will return only to the remains of people who in life kept the beliefs of their grandfathers. Only their bones will be preserved under the mountains. Reported by Ella Clark in 1953, it's like a resurrection story. If you notice, it's like their own version of uh, the return of, of God and a doomsday. Because look, it says when they overturn the mountains, the great chief above will overturn the mountains. So it's kind of like very common theology, you know, theological point there. And look, the spirits will return only to the remains of people who in life kept the belief. So who were righteous of their grandfather. See, but in other face, the people rejected the religion of their grandfathers, accepted the new uh, religion, which is going from the old to the new. And for the Native Americans, it's the opposite. It's holding to the old and staying away from the new. Wow. That is a very cool story. I mean, really unique if you think about it. It's why it's good to really read what other cultures had to say in the past. Thank goodness this story survived. It's very unique. Very thought-provoking. Glad it exists. Okay, this story is titled Children of the Sun. So many cultures have stories about the sun. And this is from the Osage tribe. Okay. Way beyond the earth, a part of the Osage lived in the sky. They wanted to know where they came from. So they went to the sun. He told them that they were his children. Then they wandered still farther and came to the moon. She told them that she gave birth to them and that the sun was their father. She said that they must leave the sky and go down to live on earth. They obeyed, but found the earth covered with water. They could not return to their home in the sky, so they wept and called out, but no answer came from anywhere. They floated about in the air, seeking in every direction for help from some god, but they found none. The animals were with them, and of these elk inspired all creatures with confidence because he was the finest and most stately. The Osage appealed to the elk for help. <laughs> wow, so this creature that came from the sky is asking the elk for help. You know, a lot of you know people in the past had the stag, the elk, as their sigil. Related to their house, there's a lot of cultures that really like the symbolism of the deer and elk. It's very good meat, by the way. And he dropped into the water and began to sink. Then he called to the winds, and they came from all quarters and blew until the waters went upward in mist. At first, only rocks were exposed, and the people traveled on the rocky places that produce no plants to eat. Then the waters began to go down until the soft earth was exposed. When this happened, the elk in his joy rolled over and over. <laughs> That's funny. The elk just was like rolling around. And his, like, his antlers probably can get stuck in something if he does it too much, right? Probably have to do it on a really like plain grassy hill. And all his loose hairs clung to the soil. Oh, he shedded his fur. Some dogs do do that. That's why when they get on your couch, you get all their little hairs. You gotta vacuum it up. But shedding, yeah. The hairs grew, and from them sprang beans, corns, and potatoes. The elk hairs became seeds. <laughs> that is so clever. The hairs grew, and from them sprang beans, corns, potatoes, and wild turnips. And then all the tall grasses and trees. From Alice Fletcher and Francis LaFleche, who recorded this myth in 1911. Oh my gosh! 
So a being came down from the sky and, uh, and he thought the elk were the finest and most stately. Think about that. It's like I said before, that's why so many royal or noble people and even warriors took the elk and deer as their sigil. It was like their symbol of their house. And even in the Native American culture right here, we're seeing from the Osage tribe uh, that this animal was viewed as very fine and stately. It's like, wow, I love culture. That is a great story. Wow. Okay, the next one is titled The Voice, the Flood, and the Turtle. And this appears to be from the Caddo tribe. It's very cool. Let's see what it is. The turtle. Once there was a chief whose wife, to the fear and wonder of the people, gave birth to four little monsters. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Gave birth to four little monsters. The elder said, These strange children will bring great misfortune. It would be better to kill them right now for the sake of the tribe. Oh my gosh! No way we will kill them, said their mother. These children will turn out all right, by and by. <laughs> oh, she loves her kids. Oh. Even when they're monsters, see, that tells you a mother's love, right? She's like, I may have given birth to little monsters, but they're my little monsters. <sighs> but they didn't turn out all right. Oops. <laughs> the small monsters grew fast and much faster than ordinary children. It became very big. They had four legs and arms each. They hurt other children. They upset teepees. <laughs> they tore up buffalo robes. They befouled people's food. A wise man who could see things in his mind, which had not yet happened, said, Kill these strange bad things before they kill you. But their mother said, Never. They'll be fine young men someday. <laughs> so that's also showing the mother's naivete. She's not recognizing what her kids are doing bad because she's, you know, she loves them so much, right? Because how do we know she loved them so much is because she uh, loved them even when they're monsters. So she has that level of love, but she's also kind of that blind, right? So when these people are complaining about her son's behavior and she's not recognizing it, uh, she's hopeful that, look, they will become fine men sometime in the future. But uh, the people are like, well, we're not going to sit around waiting for your sons to get better. They're crazy. And we knew they were crazy. Wow. They never became fine young men. Instead, they started killing and eating people. At that point, all the men in the village rushed at them to do away with them. But by then it was too late. The monsters had become too big and too powerful to be killed. Well, that's dangerous. They grew taller and taller. One day, they went into the middle of the camp and stood back to back, one facing east, one facing south, one facing west, and one facing north. Their backs grew together, and they became one. What? Whoa. So all the different directions, they came together as one, right? But think about the circle shape, right? you got the compass, and you got north, south, and west. They all point in different directions, but they're all actually circular and in this network. So that's actually a very intelligent part of the story. It's just very veiled, very interesting. As they grew higher and higher, most people took refuge near the monster's feet where the huge creatures could not bend down to catch them. But people who stayed farther off were seized by mile-long arms killed and eaten the four monsters now grown together rose up to the clouds and their heads touched the sky then the man who could see into the future heard a voice telling him to set up a hollow reed and plant it in the ground the man did and the reed grew bigger and bigger very fast that'd be kind of scary to see a plant grow that fast in no time it rose to touch the sky the man heard the voice again, saying, 
I will make a great flood. When the signs of bad things coming appear, you and your wife climb up inside this hollow cane. Wow, it must, it must, so the plant got so big and they could be able to climb inside of it. It's hollow. Take with you a pair of all the good animals in order to save them. Oh, it's like a Noah thing. Think about it. The man asked, What sign will you be sending? When all the birds in the world, birds of the woods, the sea, the deserts, and the high mountains form up into a cloud flying from north to south, that will be a sign. Watch for the cloud of birds. Oh my gosh. The guy asks him what's going to be the sign. And the, and the response is that there's all the birds in all the different uh, environments. Are going to amass together in a giant cloud of birds as the signal whoa one day the man looked up and saw a big cloud made up of birds traveling from north to south at once he and his wife moved up into the hollow reed taking with them all the animals they wished to save then it began to rain and did not stop Waters covered the earth and kept rising until only the top of the hollow cane and the heads of the monsters were left above the surface. Inside the hollow reed, the man and his wife heard the voice again. Now I shall send turtle to destroy the monsters. What? The turtle? How's he going to make the turtle tough? Let's see. The monsters' heads were saying to each other. So the monster heads are talking. Brothers, I'm getting tired. My legs are weakening. I can't keep standing much longer. The floods swirled around them with strong currents that almost swept them away. Then the great turtle began digging down underneath the monster's feet. It uprooted them, and they could not keep their footing but broke apart and toppled over. Wow, so because the turtle likes to go underneath and dig, it did it by the monster's feet, which made them kind of like, whoa. Like, up, literally uprooted them so they couldn't be, like, firm in their place. And they toppled over. <laughs> Think about that. You, you thought you could, like, how many of us look at a turtle in a way that can do anything good? You see the turtle and you're like, hey, your only, like, defense is your shell. You can't, you're not, like, an offensive warrior creature predator, right? You don't, you think of a turtle as strictly defense. But clearly in this story, they're showing you another angle of the, you know, imagery surrounding a turtle. And it's called actually like, so the great turtle. So you know it's like the turtles of the turtles. And it, you know, went underneath and then like made it so that they tipped over. Wow. They fell down into the waters. One seeking toward the north. One towards the east. One towards the south. And one towards the west. Thus the four directions came into being. After the monsters had drowned, the water subsided. First the mountain tops reappeared, then the rest of the land. Next came hard blowing winds that dried the earth. The man climbed down to the bottom of the hollow reed and opened the hole at its foot. He looked out. He stuck out his hand and felt around. He said to his wife, come out. Everything is dry. Wow. Everything is dry, like, you can now kind of walk on it, get to where you gotta go. So they emerged, followed by all the animals. They left the reed. So it is kind of like a Noah's Ark story, but instead of being in a boat, they're being in a reed. Very cool. Which collapsed and disappeared, but then they stepped out on the earth. It was bare. Nothing was growing. The wife said, Husband, there's nothing here and we're naked. <laughs> <laughs> that's so practical if you think about it she's like hey there isn't anything here and i don't have any clothes what's going on and we're surrounded by animals <laughs> it's so cute uh, husband there's nothing here the man said go to sleep they lay down and slept and when they woke the next morning all kinds of herbs had sprung up around them the second night, while they slept, trees and bushes grew. Now there was firewood to keep them warm, 
and all kinds of woods for making bows and arrows. During the third night, green grass covered the earth and animals appeared to graze on it. <laughs> the man and his wife went to sleep a fourth time and woke up inside a grass hut. They stepped out and found a stalk of corn. Then they heard the voice say, This will be your holy food. It told the woman how to plant and harvest the corn and ended with, Now you have everything you need. Now you can live. Now you will have children and form a new generation. If you woman should plant corn and something other than corn comes up, then know that the world will come to its end. Oh, that is so cool. After that, they never heard the voice again. Wow. Retold from various sources. Wow. Oh my gosh, I love this. Wow, The Voice, The Flood, and the Turtle by the uh, Cattle Tribe. Very great. Beautiful. Well, I hope you enjoy, family.